Hey everybody, it's Mike here. In today's video, we're going to talk about the difference between an SR or service router versus a DR or distributed router in NSXT. Now this is a topic that a lot of people miss and un misunderstand or misinterpret, and it's actually pretty simple. So if you're comfortable with that topic, feel free to move on and just subscribe on your way out. If you're not comfortable with it, we're gonna hit the whiteboard and hopefully we'll clear up any doubts you might have. So let's jump right into it. All right, so in NSXT, when you create a router, whether it's a T1 or T0, we'll just say, in this case, we'll say it's a T0, and we're gonna give it a name, we'll say Mike's, T0. So we went into NSX and we named it Mike's T0 and we created that T0. Now, technically, when you create it, there's kind of two halves to that. Now, you have the DR component and you have the SR component. The SR component, again, stands for service router and DR stands for distributed. I'll just do dist router, distributed router. All right. So those are the two components. So essentially what happens when you create a T0 in this case, you have a T0 SR component and a T0 DR component. Now the SR component is responsible for things like BGP, OSPF, that is to the physical network. Um, it'll also run NAT, any stateful services, gateway firewall. So that gateway firewall is your in and outbound firewall, essentially in and out of your environment. So that's the purpose of that. So that's a, a few examples of what, what services would run for that SR component. The distributed router is essentially responsible for routing east-west. So that is really the, the purpose of the distributed router. Now, here's the thing. So the distributed router lives on your transport nodes which again, in most cases, that would be vSphere host, but that also does include your edge nodes because that is a transport node. And the SR always lives only on your edge nodes. So when we, when, you know, a lot of times people will say, oh, I set up my T0 for BGP. What they really mean is they set up their T0 for BGP, but the SR component of that T0 is the one actually doing the BGP. So technically these are all one router, but there are separate components that make up that router. So it's kind of a, it, it kind of messes with your mind because they're, they're separated. So you have the SR, Mike's T0 SR living on your edge nodes. You have Mike's T0 DR living on all your transport nodes, your vSphere host, and your edge node potentially. Now it gets even more confusing as you get into the weeds because technically, you know, in this case, right, maybe we don't have any workloads connected to our T0 on the distributed router side. So it gets kind of wonky if you start kind of getting into the weeds, but this is ultimately how it works at a high level. Now it's the same concept, you know, if we have, uh, you know, let's say we have a T1, right? Same exact concept, we have a DR and we have an SR component. Now, just because we have a T1 though, doesn't mean we have to enable stateful services, so such as NAT or, you know, gateway firewall or anything like that, right? So technically, we don't really even need the SR component if we're only doing distributed routing. So actually, you know what, let's, let's, let me draw this out a different way. So let's say we have, we'll say we have a host here and on that host, we have a VM. And over here, we have another host and let's see, we'll just write host. And on that, we have our edge VM. All right, that's hard to, hard to read, but you get the point. And keep in mind, we normally would have two of those edge VMs for HA, but we're kind of simplifying it just to illustrate this point. Now, from a network standpoint, Let's say I go in here and I say, um, uh, we create that Mike's T0, right? All right, so we create that. And again, we have a DR component and we have an SR component. Okay, so I go into that T0 and I say, I wanna enable NAT. Okay, so I enable NAT. And in addition to that, I tell it, you know, I wanna create a segment and I wanna connect some VMs to it, right? Now, ultimately what this looks like on the host is of course we have, I'm kind of drawing this tiny, we have that segment. So that VM is connected to the segment. Now on the host, what do we have? On the host, we will have, in this case, if we connect it up here, we would have the DR component. So this would be Mike's T0 DR. And then ultimately on the edge node, since we enable the stateful services for this T0, you guessed it correctly, we would have our SR. And that's really hard to read, so let's do this. Uh, we'll make this, ooh, that's even harder to read. All right, let's do this. That will be our SR, there you go, it's white. 
We'll see. That's that's hopefully readable. Anyway, the point is we now have Mike's T0 SR living on the edge nodes and the DR component on the host. So from a traffic standpoint, ultimately what this looks like is when traffic leaves this VM, it's going to hit that segment, hit the DR. The DR will have a route to the SR in this case. So it will actually route across the physical network to that SR component. And in this case, that SR component, you know, let's say it's internet bound traffic. It'll say, oh yeah, you know, you're going out to the physical network, so it'll route it that way. So that's how that would route. Now, obviously, if let's say in this case, you know, maybe we had another VM living on this host right here. Wow, that's really sloppy, but you get the point. Okay, so in this case, the traffic flow here, let's say that VM was connected to that distributed router. So it's on a different segment. In this case, I didn't draw it out here, but there are two different segments. So two different layer two subnets or broadcast domains. Now in this case, traffic flow between these would just go through the distributed router. So they would just keep flowing like that. It wouldn't actually ever hit the physical network unless we were doing NAT between those two segments. So that's when it gets kind of interesting. So in that case, what would happen is traffic would actually hit the distributed router across the physical network to the SR, back, and then through to the VM if we are doing NAT. So it's something to keep in mind that there are some cases where you need to take that into consideration in your design that you can't have that trombone effect. So it just depends. Now in this case, you know, if you really needed NAT within those segments, then you know it is what it is. But a lot of customers will, you know, in my experience, will really only want NAT primarily right here for in and outbound traffic. So that internal east-west NAT situation can create kind of a suboptimal flow. So that said, until next time, stay nerdy. Don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this. Take care.